Alright guys, we are back with episode 6 of Big Brother 26. This is the aftermath of the last eviction. So we see that our boy Matt just went home and it's a lot of emotions, I gotta say, a lot of emotions. There's a couple people crying, there's a couple people that are happy, like Angela, like she went up to Mackenzie, who was obviously very upset and crying, and she said, do you want to hug me? Like, I don't know, like, this is a game, girl. And like, Mackenzie did hug her, but... Then we saw some people that were very upset, like Matt, even though he was up against Matt. Then there was people who were confused because there was three votes to, to keep Matt. And everyone kind of figured one was Leah and one was Mackenzie. Then the third one was kind of up in the air, but pretty much everybody knew that it was Lisa. Lisa was just acting clueless and acting like, oh no, I was not, well, she genuinely didn't expect it to be a, that lopsided of a vote. So she was just acting like she voted for Kenny to stay. And of course we see Tucker, her mortal enemy, inside the DR calling her a snake. Saying he knows that it was her. But pretty much, like I said, everyone knew it was her. We see Lisa meet inside of, I think, the bathroom or like a bedroom with Chelsea. And Lisa, this is our first time where we hear Lisa actually say that she voted for Matt to go. And Chelsea wasn't buying it either, just like no one else. Chelsea was like, oh, you're lying to my face. And her DR, she was saying this. We see T-Core and Chemo meet inside of, I think, the storage room. I like this alliance. They're like the nerds. Like, I think T-Core was the one that called herself uh, captain of the nerds or something like that. And obviously, Chemo is like an outcast of the season. So it's cool that those two have an alliance and they're getting along and they're you know, like T Core was hyping up Chemo, saying like, "Don't mess with Chemo," because he won the uh, AI arena and all that stuff. So they're doing good. They're pretty happy. Like they don't mind Matt leaving, which is cool. Like, I'm glad that they're uh, on a positive side coming out of this eviction. We see Leah and Mackenzie meet, and this was so awkward because Mackenzie's in the bathroom and Leah walks in the bathroom and just kind of like starts bawling her eyes out. But the way she did it just seemed so fake. Like, at first, I was confused as to was she faking, was she for real, because then when they start talking, so then they both start crying in the bathroom. And to be honest, it both seemed kind of fake. And I was like, what is this? Like, yeah, it seemed forced, especially on Leah's end. It did not seem real. And then when they started actually talking, it looked like Leah wasn't crying at all, and Le Leah would smile. And I'm just like, what? I was confused. And like, why are they crying? Why is Leah crying so much? Like, Y'all know me, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not in the house, but I digress. They were talking about like they gotta win the HOH for Matt and Revenge Matt, and I hate when people do that on Big Brother 2, this is just weird. In my opinion, it's just weird. They talk about the barbershop and how uh, they thought all these people were with Matt, and Leah says that barbershop was BS, literally, uh, but Mackenzie's like, oh, even though they all turned on me, I need to stick with this alliance because I need the numbers, and I'm like, Mackenzie, are you an idiot? Well, clearly, you're, like, they turned on you. It's not a real alliance. Like, Leah, Leah might be more of the smart one. I, and, like, she does seem to talk herself out of a lot of situations. Leah is, Leah seems pretty good at this game. But she just don't have numbers or an alliance right now. So, I hope she makes jury. She seems like a good player. She needs to win an HOA. She really needs to win something to gain some numbers, gain an alliance. Because right now... I like Leah, but it's just not looking good for her, for her longevity in, in this game. We get to the HOH comp. It was a true or false competition. They played animal videos, like a bunch, like a compilation of them. And then there was true and false questions. If you get the question wrong, you're eliminated. So they played a compilation of videos, right? Animal videos. Eight people got eliminated immediately. Well, they got, everyone got one right, it went like that, and then eight people got eliminated. So then we're down to six. Then down to six, we got down to four real fast. Uh, and then out of the four, the four finalists were T-Core, Chelsea, Leah, and Chemo. Out of these four, Leah winning would have been interesting. I also feel like Chemo winning would have been pretty interesting to see what he would have done. Uh, I honestly, I don't know if I don't like this competition. Like, it's a competition. I feel like this is a competition that they can do on a live show, though. Uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard when you do uh, any any challenge like this, in my opinion, because you watch all these videos, right? Like, I don't know if it's like six of them, eight of them, ten of them, but you're watching all these videos, and you don't even know what you're looking for. You're just watching videos. Like, what am I? Like, what? You don't know which video they're gonna ask you about, and in the video that you're watching, you don't even know what 
part of this video you should look at. Should you look at what color the cat is? Should you look at what's on the wall next to the cat? Should you look at how many feet the cat jumped? You know? So that's why I feel like this conversation is pretty hard. I'm not saying I dislike it. I just feel like it's it's kind of difficult. Like it's, I don't think it's a crapshoot. Some people might may call it that. But anyway, back to the competition. We're down to four. He, uh, they asked another question and Kimo gets eliminated. So now we're down to the three girls. So we're guaranteed another female winner. This season is awesome because it's different. We don't see this a lot nowadays in Big Brother. So we're down to T-Core, Chelsea, and Leah. And out of these three, I would say I would kind of room for Leah. Chelsea probably, I mean, Chelsea, T-Core, I don't know what T-Core would have done, but I feel like T-Core is in a good spot to not win. Chelsea was just at the bottom because she was a mascot, so her winning would be interesting too. But now I've already seen it, so it's kind of hard for me to say, like, oh, that would be interesting. You know what I mean? Uh, because she's kind of going with the house, Angela. Spoiler alert. So I'm just spoiling ahead. But anyway, as I just said, uh, we get to a question where Leah and t -Core actually got it wrong and Chelsea got it right. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned that Cedric actually threw the competition. He got a question wrong on purpose. Uh, and then Chelsea actually said that she was guessing on a lot of the questions or on a few of the questions because she didn't really want to win either. But then she ended up the winner and the new head of household. So congratulations to her. Uh, this should be fun. So we get back into the house and Leah's crying again. Like in her DR, she's crying. And I don't know. I like Leah. I honestly like Leah. But when she cries, it seems fake. It seems forced. It don't seem real. That's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. I don't know. She, The way she acts and carries herself, she just don't seem like a person that would be this emotional. And maybe that's just... I don't know. And then how she does it, it just doesn't seem... Super authentic to me. But I like Leah. I just want to keep putting it out there. Because I don't want anything to get misinterpreted. Uh, we see Chelsea meet with a few of her alliance members. As she asks some people like what they think. And Cam says that he will put up Mackenzie, Leah, and Lisa. t -Core says something that I could not make out. I don't really know what she said. But she basically... I, I think she may have said like they were too much... She disagreed with those this, this, those three. I know that. She disagreed with those three. So then, like, they started throwing around, like, maybe uh, Angela or, you know, stuff like I don't know. I don't really remember. <laughs> but, because I couldn't really make out what they were saying. Because, you know, Big Brother's full of whispers. We get to the HOH room, which Big Brother this season is not messing with the HOH room reveals. Like, they just took that completely out. Like, who wants to see my HOH room? Ah, here's the letter. That... That is just gone. So we just cut to a scene because Chelsea's literally talking to Cam and some of her other alliance members, T Core, Cam and T Core inside of a room, like a regular room. And then we cut to the next scene and Chelsea's talking to Tucker in the HOH room with an HOH robe on. Like he's like, Jesus, like you switched real fast. Uh, so Tucker, of course, suggests his mortal enemy, Lisa. This is hilarious. So then we see this compilation of. All the time, Lisa's been irritating Tucker. This feud is hilarious, and it kind of reminds me of Big Brother 20... Would that be 23? Uh, or 24? I think it was Taylor season, I think. Where it was Jasmine and Turner, I think? It kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> That's what this this feud is kind of reminding me of. I love it. I think it's hilarious. Chelsea's not a fan of Lisa already, so Tucker saying her name is just adding fuel to the fire. I feel like he gonna say her name until she actually is out the house. I don't want to skip over this scene. It was Chelsea and Kimo talking about something a little bit more serious. They connect on the fact that Kimo's dad was a minister and Chelsea's like, oh, I grew up in the church. They start talking about that a little bit and uh, they talk about how Kimo uh, came out as gay and how Chelsea's brother actually came out as gay and her brother her dad helped her brother a lot and it made her love her brother and her dad a lot more than she already did uh, and then Kimo talked about how he didn't get a chance to come out to his dad because his dad actually passed away uh, Chelsea talked about how her brother was really really scared but the dad helped out and that's when Kimo mentioned that he didn't get a chance to come out to his dad and they just bonded over all that. They both got kind of emotional, was trying to hold it back. It was a really good scene and I'm glad that they put it on the show. That was good. It was good. And I just wanted to mention it inside this review.
The next thing we see is Chelsea meets with Cam and Cedric. Her and Cedric are super close because they were the mascots last week together. They spent a lot of time together, and they're both really cool with Cam. They decided to create an alliance with those three, and they wanted to make it a little bit bigger, so they pulled in. They both, they all three really like Brooklyn, so they brought Brooklyn in, and they all three really like Quinn, so they bring Quinn in. And Brooklyn and Quinn were both down for the alliance. Quinn says that he's already in a bunch of alliances, but he, of course, is taking this one. Brooklyn... Uh, says that she felt like she was the fifth person to get pulled in, so she feels like she's at the bo bottom, but for now, it's cool for her. This is when Brooklyn kind of reminded... Can I just say, I forgot Brooklyn exists. She was my favorite person. I forgot she exists, because I remember I was watching this episode, and up to this point, I had said, oh, Ch it was when Chelsea was talking to T-Core. I was like, okay, so we got Chelsea and T-Core, and they had just showed, like, Angela, or not Angela, Chelsea and T-Core, they had been showing Leah and Mackenzie a lot, and I'm like, okay, and then you have Angela and Lisa, and I'm like, oh, so these are like the three click, even though Angela and Lisa is not a click no more because they got in a fight, but I, I thought those were the girls, and I'm like, oh my god, Brooklyn, Brooklyn exists, and where in the world was Rubina? She was not on this, did she get any camera time? Did she get a single DR? I don't think Rubina was on this episode at all. That was my favorite. <laughs> she was my favorite uh, house guest. I think she just don't exist this episode. She got no time. I don't know. I don't know. She just was imp invisible in this episode. But Brooklyn showed up at this point, and she actually... With what she said, is she was sounding smart. Because remember, she sounded like a gamer in previous episodes to me. She kind of reminded me of Big Brother 16's Amber, if y'all remember her. Amber went on to go on the challenge, and she's been very successful on the challenge. She's actually won a season of the challenge. I think she was the first Big Brother winner of the challenge. So she's a gamer. She's good. She also came out a few years ago as autistic. It was big of her to come out. She came out to it on TV, too. She let everyone know. Uh, so, yeah. Big ups to her. But back to the show. Yeah, she reminded me of Amber. And they decided to call this alliance the Pentagon. Next, we see this unnecessary scene with Tucker and Mackenzie. I feel like they just want a showmance. And now that the showmance is gone, they're just trying to, like... They want some type of love. And, like, no one's doing anything right now. Like, they don't have Mackenzie and... Matt anymore, which they probably was relying on being the showmans of the season. I think they have Quinn and Leah are kind of... I wish they would have shown that more than this. Mackenzie and Tucker. I don't know. They just decided to show us this, but it did it did nothing for me, and I'm pretty sure it did nothing for anyone else. It was basically like they were just rubbing suntan, suntan lotion on each other's back. We see Angela meet with Chelsea in the HOH room. She gives her spiel. She knows she's probably going up. She says, if you put me up, I still won't put you up. She's trying to play that card, get the sympathy, be the... She feels like she'll be the shield, all that. Chelsea don't even want to put Angela up. She don't want Angela to go home, and Chelsea's playing a good game by that. In real time, it's a little bit different. But at this time, this is how Chelsea felt. And then we see Chelsea meet with Mackenzie. Mackenzie was an option, like a fifth or fourth option for Chelsea. Uh... And Chelsea just so happened to mention powers, and Mackenzie spilled about her power. At this point, Mackenzie, you told everybody. Because, once, in my opinion, once you told two people, it's over. Because if you tell one person and someone else finds out, you know who it came from. But if you told two people, it's over. So you tell the whole house. And I'm pretty sure most of the house do know. But she said she did the build, build trust or something. But then the Pentagon meets together. Chelsea told her whole alliance about the power. And uh, they talked about, and this is where, in my last review, this is where I turned on the feeds. This is this scene. Uh, nothing really super special came out of this scene from the actual episode. They just talked about the same stuff and the nominations. Oh, actually, probably the biggest thing that came out is Chelsea telling about the power and Quinn is listening. And he's just like, oh, yeah, I'm not selling mines. And he said, like, if he does, then it'll just seem like he lied a lot and people start not questioning people start questioning everything he says well uh, it seems like like Quinn told Angela of all people and I'm surprised that that hasn't come out more does who else knows about Quinn's power I'm I don't remember leave it in the comment section if y'all know cuz I, I just forgot I don't think anyone knows I don't know but I, I'm glad I hope he doesn't tell anybody and if Angela does go home this week that'd be great 
for him because then no one would know about his power if he didn't tell anybody else. But then we get to the nominations and Chelsea made the nominations that we all thought she would, which was Kenny, which I don't even think I talked about Kenny. I don't know. But Kenny, she made she nominated Kenny, she nominated Angela, and she nominated Lisa. No one can stand Lisa. Lisa, and it almost feels like Lisa's being annoying on purpose in a way. It just seems like she's just, this glitter stuff and everything is just, I don't know. If, if maybe she went into the house thinking, like, this is going to be my thing, is this glitter and I'll just get this over or whatever. I don't know. Kenny, he wants to leave in real time. Plan the whole, uh, I want to leave, self a vague, yada, yada, mash the state. And then Angela is who I want to stay, and I feel like a lot of the fans, the viewers, want Angela to stay because she's the most entertaining. Uh, people call her bully is ridiculous. She's not. We've seen real bullies on this show. Go watch uh, Taylor's season. Go watch uh, season 19 with Cody and Jess. Go watch season 15. Go watch season 9. Those are like actual bullies. Season 8. Those are some bullies that you will see. But that's it for this video, guys. My favorite coming out of this one would probably be... Actually, it would definitely be Chelsea. Chelsea was the most entertaining. Uh, her conf her DRs are hilarious. She reminds me of just the way she talks and how she is. She kind of reminds me, honestly, of That's So Raven, Raven Simone. Not current day Raven Simone. But That's So Raven, the TV show, Raven Simone on there. That character. That's how Chelsea reminds me of, to be honest. Everyone reminds me of someone. Like, literally everybody on this season reminds me of someone. At this point, like I feel like uh, Mackenzie is reminding me more and more of Angela from season 20. I don't know, but that's it for this video, guys. Let me leave it a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all forms of social media. Until next time, catch y'all later.